Good afternoon, Clorga Malaysia. Coming to you live from Ankasapuri, I'm Mohana Priya and welcome to Updates at Noon, making our headlines for today. Hotel and food premises with no halal certification reminded to not advertise a Ramadan buffet. Russia accused of civilian massacre in Bucha. Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob has prayed for the recovery and good health of Yang Dipertuan Agung Al Sultan Abdullah Riyaya Tudin Al Mustafa Abdullah Shah and Raja Pemaisuri Agung Tunku Haja Aziza Aminah Maimunah Iskandaria. Through a post on his Facebook page, the Prime Minister said the entire Keluarga Malaysia also prayed for the well-being of the royal couple. The King and Queen are undergoing self-quarantine at Istana Negara after being confirmed positive for COVID-19. Comptroller of the Royal Household for Istana Negara, Dato Ahmad Fadil Shamsuddin, in a statement, had said Al Sultan Abdullah would be undergoing quarantine until Thursday, while Tunku Aziza until Friday. Hotel operators of food premises that do not have halal certification have been reminded to not advertise Ramadan buffets. They are also prohibited from using halal buffet-related phrases when promoting their buffets. The Malacca Islamic Religious Department, JAIM, Director Datu Che Sukri Che Mat said phrases such as Ramadan Buffet, Iftar Ramadan, Jom Iftar, Ditanggung Halal and Dijamin Halal were prohibited when promoting their buffets so as not to confuse the Muslims. To date, only 14 hotels in Malacca have obtained the Malaysian Halal Certification and are allowed to use the phrases in promoting or advertising their Ramadan Buffets. Yang tidak memiliki sijil halal, larangan pengiklanan kepada mana-mana hotel, mana-mana hotel yang tidak memiliki 14, ini yang 14 tadi, tidak memiliki sijil halal, tidak boleh menggunakan term pun cukup dah sebab ayat boleh memperdayakan pengguna. Contoh dia, dia kata, jom iftar bersama hotel kita. Di bawah tu kalau dia ada cok halal kat bawah tu memang tak boleh. Therefore, he said JAIM, together with the Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry, would conduct checks at hotels and food premises around Melaka to ensure that this does not happen. Met after an operation in the Melaka Tengah district, Dato Che Sukri said that hotels or food premises found to have committed the offence could be taken action against under the Trade Description Act 2011. Petrol station operators selling subsidised petrol to foreign registered vehicles, including motorcycles, will face stern action. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Dato Sri Alexander Nantalingi said his ministry has periodically issued instructions to all petrol companies and petrol station operators near the Singapore border to ensure that the RON95 petrol sales ban is enforced. The ministry has also ordered all state ministry officers bordering Singapore and Thailand to intensify monitoring and inspections, as well as to take stern action against any party that violates the Control of Supplies Act 1961, Act 122, and Control of Supplies Regulations 1974. The Act stipulates the following penalties, including fines not exceeding 1 million ringgit or a jail sentence of not more than three years, or both for individuals, and fines not more than 2 million ringgit for entities or companies that violate the Act. He said the ministry views the matter seriously after the issue went viral with allegations that vehicles bearing Singapore registration plates were seen being filled up with yellow nozzle pumps, which usually are reserved for Ron 95 patrol. The ministry's enforcement division has been instructed to conduct an immediate investigation and be more aggressive in its monitoring efforts at all petrol stations, especially those near the border states, to avoid leakages of subsidised patrol to foreign foreign vehicles. 
On a separate matter, the minister advised traders not to take advantage of the reopening of the country's borders to increase the prices of their goods. He said the reopening of the borders would definitely boost the economic sector with the arrival of visitors from abroad into the country. He said the phenomenon of visitors coming from outside would also definitely increase the demand for certain goods in the market. Pantau harga dan juga pantau bekalan, ya, harga berpatutan. Ini untuk memastikan pematuhan yang tinggi uh, di kalangan peniaga berikutan penubuhan apa sepenuhnya, pembukaan sepenuhnya uh, sektor uh, ekonomi dan uh, pintu sempadan. As such, the ministry appeals to traders not to take advantage of the situation to make unreasonable profits, as profiteering is an offence. The minister also said KPD and HGP would step up enforcement and monitoring during Ramadan and Hari Raya Idul Fitri this year through Ops Pantau 2022. He said Ops Pantau aims to ensure that consumers are able to easily get food supplies and daily necessities at reasonable prices. A foreigner was arrested following a 30-minute car chase after he attempted to run over patrol policemen who flagged him down at Jalan Sungai Bulo, Petaling Jaya. Petaling Jaya District Deputy Police Chief Superintendent Ku Marashiman Ku Mahmud said police fired a shot at a tyre of the suspect's car when he tried to ram them, but he still sped off. The 40-year-old man was arrested at Bandar Pinggiran Subang in Shah Alam at about 6 p.m. when he abandoned his car and tried to escape on foot. He said the man had been remanded for four days for investigations on attempted murder and defying police orders. The suspect also did not have valid identification and travel documents. Police seized the car which was used by the suspect. Coming up in sports, Patatimo boys' dreams of winning first title in 2022 dashed. More on that after this. There has been a drastic increase in suicide cases as compared with previous years. According to PDRM, as of March of this year, a total of 336 suicide cases were recorded. We can manage this issue if we are able to identify the symptoms of early depression. Don't go through it alone. Go and get help. Young national men's doubles pair won Arif Wanjunaidi Mohamed Haikal Nazri's hopes to land their first title of 2022 at the Orleans Masters in France were dashed when they were forced to withdraw from the final match yesterday. This came after Mohamed Haikal tested positive for COVID-19 just hours before the Malaysian pair were to step into the court for their final showdown against Dutch duo Ruben Gilles Thies van der Lerk. The unseeded pair's withdrawal effectively handed Gilles van der Lerk the championship title. The Patatimo boys' brilliant run came to an end today after they conceded a walkover following Haikal Nazri's positive COVID-19 test. Badminton Association of Malaysia, BAM, shared in a Facebook post today wishing Mohamed Haikal a speedy recovery. Trunganu born Wan Arif and Mohamed Haikal of Klantan had qualified for the final after the aged home pair Eloy Adam, Julian Mayo, 21-18-21-16 in their semi-final match on Saturday. The world number 103 had pulled off one of the tournament's biggest upsets earlier with a 1921-24-22, 21-19 victory against a world number 30 pair, Frenchman Christo Popov, Thomas Jr. in their opening round match. Why do we tell you stories? Relevant. New. Efficient. Accurate. Reliable. We bring you extraordinary stories from around the world. 
from politicians, bankers, and even your favorite celebrities. This and many more on RTM's English News. And with that, we reach the end of today's updates at noon. In our headline for today, hotel and food premises with no halal certification prohibited from advertising a Ramadan buffet. Don't forget to watch news at 10 for the latest update, available on Salura and Berita RTM at 10 p.m. Or you can watch it online on RTM Click's website and mobile app. Before we go, we leave you with a picturesque scenery of spring season in China. Till then, Kluarga Malaysia, I'm Mona Priya. Goodbye.